really am. It has been way too long since I posted a video, but today I'm super excited to be sharing this DIY faux fireplace tutorial with you guys. I'll be honest, I didn't do a lot of the work in this. I was kind of just a helping hand for my husband, but it really was super easy and anybody can do it, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. Before we had a really big blank wall in our living room and I wanted to find a way to center the room and add some interest to it. And I've also always really wanted a fireplace to be able to decorate during the holidays and all of that fun stuff. But when we bought our house, we loved it, but there was no fireplace and there wasn't really a good option on adding a fireplace without it getting super expensive. So that's when we came up with the idea of building a faux fireplace. And like I said, I'm so, so happy with how it turned out. But before we get into the tutorial, make sure you like and subscribe and comment down below letting me know if you like this type of house content and you want to see more of it this year. And let's get onto the video. The first thing we did was taped our fireplace out in our space just to make sure everything looked correct and proportional and that we got an idea of what measurements we wanted. Once we had an idea of our measurements and what we needed, we made a list and headed to the hardware store. These are the materials that we use for the fireplace base. And these are the materials that we use for the wood mantle. I will also put these lists in the description down below and I will update them in case I forgot anything. These are the tools that we decided to use, but you might be able to get away with swapping out some different tools with what you already have. For example, with the brad nailer, you could also just use a hammer and nails. And for a lot of the saws, you could substitute out a handsaw. It would be a lot more difficult and maybe take a lot longer, but it would be doable. Now that we had all of our materials, we started out by building the frame for our fireplace. You can build your fireplace to be however big you want it to be based on your space, but just for some reference, we built ours to be four feet tall, four feet wide, and one foot deep. While we were building our fireplace frame, we kept those measurements in mind, but we scaled them back a half inch to account for the half inch MDF that is going to be around all sides. To build the frame, we started off by building two identical U-shaped pieces for the front and the back of the frame. These U-shaped pieces should be identical, but we did make one change to the piece that's going to be in the back of the fireplace, and that is that we cut a little notch so that it would fit perfectly over our baseboards and look really seamless, and that way we didn't have to cut out our baseboards. For example, our baseboards are a half inch deep by five inches tall, so we cut that same size notch out of each piece of the back of the frame. Now we started to cut out some of the pieces of our MDF so that while we're building the frame, we can make sure everything is lining up correctly. We cut two 12 inch pieces for the sides and one 13 inch piece for the bottom to allow for a little bit of overhang. We clamped the MDF side pieces onto our U-shaped pieces to make sure everything was fitting correctly and staying straight while we secured the two U-shaped pieces together. To secure them together, we just used a couple pieces of scrap 2x4. We added two horizontal 2x4s to our frame at the height we wanted our fireplace hole to be. We decided that we want our fireplace hole to be at 31 inches. When you're adding these two pieces, make sure everything is staying level and you're screwing them in at the same height on every piece so that everything stays straight in the end. Now taking the 13 inch piece that we cut out for the bottom plate, we're gonna start off by cutting a notch in it. And this is kind of just a personal preference. And the reason why we're cutting this notch is because I wanted a one inch overhang on the front of the fireplace, but I didn't want any overhang on the sides of the fireplace. So this notch is just going to be a part where the side pieces can slide into it and the side pieces will go all the way down to the bottom. Now we flipped the whole frame upside down and we clamped the side pieces onto the frame just to make sure everything was still fitting correctly. And then we secured the bottom plate to the two by fours. For the last part of the frame, we added some side pieces for the inside of the fireplace or the hole of the fireplace. And like I said, we wanted that to be 31 inches tall. We cut four identical pieces of two by four at 31 inches. And you will see in the back that we cut the same notches as we did the last time, just so that they would fit over the baseboards as well. Here is our completed frame and we decided to finish off the project in our house in its place so that we could make sure everything's fitting up against the wall correctly. 
We took those 12 inch pieces of MDF for the sides of the fireplace and we cut out that same notch so that it would fit over the baseboards just like before. You can see in this picture how it's all fitting, but once we have this all caulked and everything, it's going to look really seamless. We clamped on the sides and then we clamped on a piece of MDF that is roughly the size of what the front is going to be just to make sure that the sides are in the perfect place and then we nailed them in with our brad nailer. Once those outside side pieces are on, we started working on the inside pieces. We cut two 12 inch strips out of our remaining MDF. Then we cut them so that they were the right height for the sides and the top of our fireplace hole. And again, you'll see that we cut out the same notch to fit over the baseboards in these pieces as well. We clamped these pieces on, but we decided not to secure them just yet until we figured out if the front piece fit perfectly. At this point, we decided to secure our whole frame to our wall and into our studs with some angle brackets. This is to make sure that this fireplace is really sturdy and doesn't go anywhere. This was definitely the most nerve wracking part of the project and that was to cut out the fireplace hole for the front. I'm sure there are many different ways that you could do this, but we just used our circular saw with a guide attached and my husband just did his best to cut out really straight lines with some plunge cuts using this saw. If you have any cuts that have a little bit of a jagged edge, just make sure to sand that part off so that everything is really smooth. Now that we have our front piece and everything is fitting correctly, we can secure those side pieces using the brad nailer again. Once those inside pieces are secured, you can also secure the front. Our whole fireplace base is now done so we can start prepping to paint. First we caulked all the cracks, crevices, and seams to make it look really flawless and to make it look like it's a built-in part of the house. Then we primed the whole base and I think I ended up doing two coats of primer and the reason for this is MDF really soaks up a lot of paint and primer is a lot cheaper than paint so you'll want to use a lot more primer to make sure that it's not soaking up a lot of your expensive paint. Once all of our coats of primer were dry, we started painting on our finishing coat and the finishing paint that we're using is Benjamin Moore Advance in the color Chantilly Lace. We decided to go with the satin finish to match our baseboards and we really love this color. It's the color that our whole house is painted. Now that our fireplace base is done, we can start making the mantle. We wanted our mantle to look like a really thick piece of wood, so we decided to do that by making a box out of plywood. You can make your mantle as thick as you want it to be using this same method, but we put one by twos in the middle of our plywood, making our finished mantle about one and three quarters inches thick. We started out by cutting 13 inch pieces out of our plywood for the top of the mantle and the bottom of the mantle, and we did this to allow for a one inch overhang. When you're cutting all these pieces, make sure that all of the sides and the edges are cut at a 45 degree angle. We cut the top and the bottom pieces to the length that we wanted them to be, keeping in mind that we wanted that one inch overhang on the sides. Now we started cutting our front and our side pieces, and because we wanted our finished mantle to be one and three quarter inches thick, we made sure that these pieces were that size, and we cut both of the sides with 45 degree angles. Once they are cut with the double 45 degree angles longwise, you can cut them lengthwise to the right size for the front and the side pieces. We did this by cutting them at a 45 degree angle on our miter saw, and one tip with using a miter saw and cutting the face of plywood is just to make sure you score it right before you cut it so that the wood doesn't end up splintering. In this shot, you can kind of see how we're piecing it all together with the two pieces of plywood and then the one by two in the middle, and all sides are being cut at a 45 degree angle except for the one side that's on the back of the wall and it's up against the wall, that can just be cut straight. Then we started to secure the one by twos to the plywood and you could also do this by using wood glue and clamps, but we didn't wanna wait for the wood glue to dry, so for the top piece, we started screwing them in with three quarter inch screws. For the bottom piece, we didn't care as much about nail holes because they would be hidden, so we just secured this piece using our brad nailer. We clamped the front and the side pieces on to make sure everything was fitting correctly and one thing that I did want to mention is you could use the same plywood box method to make a really cool floating shelf. We didn't want to be able to see nail holes or screw holes for the front and the side pieces because they were going to be very visible so we decided to secure them with wood glue. When you're using wood glue you want to make sure that you're getting really good coverage so we always like to spread it out really evenly. Make sure you're also not using too much so you don't get a bunch squishing out when you push the piece on. But if a little bit does end up squishing out you can just wipe it off with a wet rag before it dries. We used painters tape to keep the pieces in place while they were drying. Once 
Once the wood glue was really dry, we took off the tape and started our finishing touches. One thing that can make your edges really clean is by running the side of a screwdriver on your edges to kind of fill in some of the cracks with the excess wood. Once we did that, we sanded all the edges to make sure everything looked really clean. We did have some remaining gaps and cracks, so we filled it in with wood fill. Make sure you're being really careful with the wood fill because if you use too much, it can stain a little bit differently than the raw wood, so you can kind of see where you use the wood fill, so just keep that in mind. When that wood fill was dry, we sanded off all the excess. We then wiped down our whole mantle to make sure there was no sawdust or dirt to get in the way of our staining. For the first step in our staining process, we use this Danish oil in the color natural. You could also use a pre-stain for this, but we like to use the Danish oil because it adds a little bit of extra color, it protects the wood, and it makes it so that the stain goes on really smoothly and it's not blotchy. The stain we decided to use is the brand Minwax in the color Puritan Pine. While the stain was drying, we decided to prepare our fireplace for the mantle. This is kind of an added bonus, but we assembled these shelves that are going on each side of the side of our fireplace. Once they were assembled, we put them against the wall and secured them with screws at the top. We decided to secure the mantle using caulk, and we made sure that the sides were even on both sides. Once everything looked really good, we weighed it down with some weights while it dried. You can then caulk the top edge of where the mantle meets the fireplace. I know I'm going to get some comments about covering up this vent. We kind of weighed the pros and the cons and we decided that it would be okay. This vent is a supply vent and there's another supply vent really close by. So we decided to just place the wood so that the air could come through the wood and up and over it. You would never want to cover up a return vent like this because it could cause damage to your HVAC system. And here is our completed project. I'm so happy with how this whole wall turned out. watching I hope you enjoyed this tutorial we have been hard at work renovating our house so if you like videos like this make sure you subscribe for more DIY home renovation videos room reveals and of course more plant content you can also comment down below letting me know what types of videos you would like me to make and I will see you in my next video bye